Coming up on today's CodeBet Daily, we have a Chockers weekend episode for you. I don't know how many sports we cover, but it's a lot. We are talking player props, game picks, best bets. There's two Rate My Multis and, of course, the donation. Stats Guy, what are you looking at? I'm looking at North to win the AFLW Premiership. Come on. Nice one. Alex? The hyphenator to get an assist tonight at Luton Town. Nice. We are covering, I believe, FIBA World, FIBA World Cup. We're talking NFL, a bit of AFL, AFLW. We've got NRL. We've got EPL. We've got some horses. NRL, it's all going on. It's all on a Chockers weekend edition of CoBet Daily. Check it out right now. Welcome to CoBet Daily. It is Friday, September 1st. That's right. Pinching a punch for the first day of the month. I'll tell you what, TGIF, well, not really. It's been a pretty chill week here in Cobet land. Without, what, nine, you, the usual nine plus AFL stories to write each week, it's yeah. like a little bit of a load off. It's not bad. We only wrote three, so that's it's a little bit <laughs> nicer. Either way, episode 186 here of Cobet Daily. I am your host, James Clements. I am the editor of a very good website in a surprise twist. That's called Code Bet. You can find it, again, in a surprising twist that no one saw coming at codebet.com.au. Joined, as always, by the punters. That's right. We've got the stats guy over there. He is. He is here. Uh, I am absolutely pumped for a lot of sport this weekend. People are a bit sad and there's no AFL this weekend, but you got AFLW, you got FIBA World Cup. I'm absolutely pumped. I also like that you were referring to yourself in the third person. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> First time for everything. <laughs> yep, he's over there. He's, uh, he's here. Uh, and we've got... The man who's not allowed within 500 metres of any primary school <laughs> in, oh, <laughs> in the northern suburbs, it's Alex Donnelly. What's going on, Alex? Uh, I can't believe we haven't mentioned the most important thing, Jim. It is one year of COVID! Oh, yeah. You're up to it. Jeez, wait a minute. <laughs> completely stepped on it, but that's all right. You don't even have it in here on the run sheet. Like, the teamwork, it could have been in the 30-second pre-production meeting we have. Guys, I'm going to do this bit. Please mention it. But, hey, they've, nice. they've kept us We've around for 12 months somehow. Yeah. Well, they've kept stats, stats guy and I around for 12 months. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, Alex, Alex this is not a podcast. This is a meeting. <laughs> I'm just keeping firing you. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, no, this is one year actually of COBET. It launched first thing Friday, uh, September 1st. That was a Thursday last year. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, with a whole bunch of AFL finals gear. 40 pieces written by Alex and myself at launch and then another bunch that went up that day. I think they got it to about 45. Um, it's been a pretty rollicking 12 months because, what, September, basically a week and a half after that, uh, my second child was born. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a hotel room tapping away, coming up with previews. Um, and Stats Guy hadn't even started. It's so like we have to teach Stats Guy how to actually use our systems and everything. It's like yeah, it was a bit uh, we crazy. actually <laughs> still kind of don't know. We're making it up as we go. And 12 months I mean, on, we are still making it up as we go. Nah, as smooth as ever. <laughs> Literally nothing has changed. So. <laughs> we have Gerald. We have yeah. a lot more videos. Uh, we have a bit more traffic, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> but this is it. Like We started CodeBet 12 months ago, but CodeBet Daily, the show, we trial that basically once we sort of had the website roughly under control and knew what we were doing. Mm. We started that for the FIFA World Cup back mm-hmm. in November and then we kicked this back into gear, what, mid-January this year and 186 episodes later. Oh, bad. Uh, that also tends to not include the extraneous AFL, NRL, EPL and obviously the FIFA World Cup shows we did. Uh, and on top mm. of that, we're now doing NBA Australia and NFL Australia through the CodeBet network. Plus That's all the little good. 10 to 15 minute videos we had done sort of all the way through with EPL, NBA previews to kick Everything, off the week. So yeah. we did set be near 300 odd episodes of uh, content throughout our network. Mm. Yep. And uh, I believe in terms of like articles published, I had that sort of moment where I'm like, I tried to do some uh, averages and I'm like, nah, this is hurting my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I would just sort of say, what, in 52 weeks, uh, this is the 53rd week of CodeBet, it's probably hit about 1,000 plus articles pretty easily. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it's, nuts. <laughs> that's because it's, it's at least 20 articles a week and uh, we're cruising past that because I think mm. there's some weeks we've got 38, 40 pieces up. Um, other ones where it's only 25, only 25 yeah. articles. <laughs> Between the three of us. So <laughs> Between Mark is chipping yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so huge thanks to everybody behind the scenes with COVID. Obviously, Gerald, our man Leo, the social guy, as you mentioned there, Marcus, and uh, the support team. We've got Sam, Weaves, all the tech dudes. Homie. Homie. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't do much with COVID. <laughs> he took two episodes. We've got to give him credit. I think yeah. Homie just gets a nod just because he doesn't beat us up every day. <laughs> Helps us with makeup. <laughs> good. 
Uh, mm. But yeah, it's been awesome. It's been gnarly. So thanks to everybody. Thanks to everyone who's listening. It's been very fun so far. And here's to another couple of, uh, you know, another 12 months at the very least. Nice. Uh, next 12 months, in 12 months' time, we might just, you know, fire Stats Guy out of a cannon because that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we can, like make it from the office to yeah. the G or at least across the Yarra. <laughs> yeah. Straight yeah. into the boring from, from the cannon. <laughs> Pretty good. All right. Today is Go Bed Daily. Today we should have a pretty quick one. There's not a giant amount going on this weekend outside of the last round of NRL, which has got a few meaningless games. Yep. Uh, but AFLW, we've got the FIBA World Cup, which is massive for me, obviously, and that's on tonight and then on Sunday again. So that's what I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk FIBA World Cup and a little bit of a quick NFL future, just two more of my total wins, which that piece should go up. Probably today. So there we go. Nice. Uh, good times. What about you, Stats Guy? What are you going to look at? I'm going to look at all AFLW. Uh, the new season starts tonight. It's been a long wait. So, yeah, came for that. Nice one. Alex? i uh, got some APL, some NRL, and, of course, the donation. If you haven't checked out the NRL show, go check it out because Phil and I were very confident on the storm last night and they were pretty big outsiders. So there's a lot of value to be found if you haven't listened to that show yet. Ooh. Yeah, that piece on our side actually did pretty well yesterday too, which is good. So we're going to talk some player props, game picks, best bets, or rate my multi. And, of course, it's Friday, so that means the donation. Nice. Gentlemen, let's get into it with a player prop. Player props, 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 props. We do have two different bits. We have the home We have the home bit in the studio bit. I like this bit better, <laughs> the echo. It's better because it's just the echo. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, player props. I'm just going to go into the Boomers versus Slovenia tonight in the FIBA World Cup. The Aussies yeah. need to win this one to stay alive. Because uh, if we lose this, we're basically cooked. Uh, we did beat Slovenia in the bronze medal match in Tokyo two years ago. So revenge is on there. Revenge! Uh, you've got Luka Doncic out there just going, oh, I see you. Yes. yes. Oh, so I remember what you did celebrating yeah. when we when we lost to yours. <laughs> I'm assuming that's how that's his, that's how his Slovenian accent sounds. Yeah. <laughs> that's Slovenian internal monologue, as everybody knows. Uh, 40 plus for Luka is $4.30. We have a lot of interesting perimeter defenders. I keep hearing this stats guy. We've got a lot of perimeter defenders on the yeah, boomers. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> everybody got thirty on our heads yeah. without barely breaking his sweat. We saw the uh, the Australian strangler Josh Hawkinson uh, do it in, for Japan, uh, mm. aka the the world's uh, like I don't know what least Japanese looking <laughs> Japanese dude. Oh yeah, that's and, how it works sometimes. And we also had Dennis Schroeder, I am German Rondo, do it to us uh, in the Germany game. He should top 30. That's only $1.54. Uh, so you can go your points, rebounds, assists. That's where a little bit more value is there, right? 47.5 yep. points, rebounds, assists for Luca. Awesome. Uh, he's obviously shredding, right? He's putting up big rebounding numbers, putting up big assist numbers. He's leading the uh, World Cup so far in points at 30 a game, uh, which is... Yeah, that's nuts. In short and time periods as well. Not bad for a 40-minute yeah. competition. Yeah. But, uh, and in terms... he's The weird thing for... Uh, Luca as well. Like you can dig into three pointers made for some of the markers with Bet three six five. Luca's actually not shooting great from three. He's going two of eight basically per game at twenty four percent. Two of eight point three. That's where that extra percent dropped off. If you're ah. at home, <laughs> uh, you see. And in terms of the rest of his stuff, though, like rebounds, he's right up there as well per game. Like he is just crushing it. So forty seven and a half. He should hit that no problems really. I think. Uh, and then if you want to go to the Aussies, Paddy Thrills, Paddy Mills. Amazingly, after a pretty down game against Japan where his shot was very clearly very off, 25-plus uh, of Paddy is $4.60. For a bloke who averages yeah. 23 a game and put 43 on the Slovenians in the bronze medal game last that time. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. So you can also get Paddy Mills like a four. Uh, the three-pointers made milestone. If you want to go four for that, that actually gets you over $3.50 just alone as well if you don't think he gets to 25-plus, but it's four threes. Mm-hmm. And his over-under just for his threes made is two and a half, which I absolutely love because I think he went one of six against Japan. Uh, defensively, Japan, not that great. Slovenia, a little bit bigger, but I think Paddy just sort of steps up a little bit more and uh, goes all oh, hammer and tongs and we get FIBA Paddy back. Nice. Uh, and the other one's Josh Giddy, pick points, rebounds, assists as well for him. Basically, it's 30, 29 and a half, $1.74. That price is dropping dramatically because Giddy had, what, 26, 4 and 11 last yeah, game? Yeah, he cleared uh, that easy. <laughs> smashed it, at least smashed it in points alone. So I think you'll see him fly over that too. Uh, the problem is you, like, you can sort of pass out some of these, you know, in a same game multi, but the points, rebounds, assists probably just sort of gives you a little bit more leeway just to hit that as a single bet. And uh, we finally got some markets for the other Slovenians. Clement Propelic, he's averaging 17 points a game in this FIBA World Cup. 
He had 18 against the Aussies, I think, in Tokyo. His over-under for this game is 13 and a half. I'm going to go the over Ooh. because he is like the sort of perfect Luca offsider, right? So Yeah. He's the only one uh, Luca trusts, I think you said yesterday. <laughs> pretty much. He's the only one that's like, ah, guy, bit or pass. Can have it. Guy. Here's the other guy. There to go. Um, <laughs> Why do I think his name's Sergey now? <laughs> There's yeah. Luca. He's very good. Uh, but Luca's gone 37, 7, and 6, 34, 10, and 6, 19, 7, and 9. Those are some big numbers. And even mm. though the Aussies are way better, way better defensively, like it's going to get pretty epic and pretty weird, I think. And Luca's going to go hammer and songs. Uh, the Germany-Georgia game today as well, if you want to throw a quick one of that. Mo Wagner, hello, the big pumpkin at himself. 11 and a half is he going to run the points. And Denny Schroeder, German Veranda, 19 and a half against a very, very uh, limited, shall we say, Georgian backcourt. Yep. Uh, the Georgians have got like pretty good size, and uh, I'll talk about them in the game picks, but yeah, Schroeder should slice and dice them like he did well, the Aussies. All right, what about you, Alex? Uh, having a look at West Ham uh, traveling to Luton Town. So it's the first game of the EPL weekend. It's at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. And having a look at a bloke we've mentioned a few times this season already, James Ward-Prowse to get an assist. Two Ooh. bucks, 95. He's played three games across both uh, competitions this season. He did play one game uh, for Sunderland, I think it was his old team, in the championship uh, before coming across to West Ham. And in two games, he's had two assists. Now, remember, we are on for the 10-plus this season. So tonight is the perfect chance against a fairly average, shall we say, Luton Town. Let's be honest, they're yep. going to get relegated. I'll be absolutely flummoxed if they don't go down this season. Uh, they've yep. looked terrible in their first two games this season. West Ham have actually been the surprise package. They're sitting second, like, Unbelievable. I can't believe that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they beat Stats Guys Chelsea. They smoked Brighton and there was a draw in there to kick off their season as well. Uh, awesome, look, man. I like how they're going about it. The way they've spent the Declan Rice money has been smart. James Ward-Prowse is one of them. He does take the set pieces and the Stats Guys rubbed on about many times. He is one of the best free kicks in all of football. So look for him either coming from the corners where he does take those set pieces or even just in, in open play where he can you know throw a cross in or a nice through ball. Uh, into the box at 295 for an assist against what's a pretty bad team. Pretty happy to take that. He's also three bucks twenty to score in case he gets a free kick. You know, in that sort of uh, couple of yards outside the box range, and it's just it's basically going to go up. in every time he steps up. So <laughs> 295 for the assist, but also maybe something small for him to score anytime at 320 because West Ham will hammer Luton tonight. Oh, oh I see what nice. you did there. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. <laughs> oh, that Not was bad, bad at all. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I am now full of rage at how bad that was. Oh. Um, but, <laughs> I feel like that, that, you would say something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, say something like that. It's why I'm so angry. <laughs> Get off my corner, Alex, making dad jokes. Uh, you have a kid, then you can make some dad jokes. All right, uh, let's go to Stats Guy for his player prop. Yeah, the AFLW is back tonight. I'm looking at the opener, uh, Melbourne versus Collingwood. This is a huge match uh, between two rivals. Uh, the Premiership favourites, Melbourne, they won the flag last year as well. I think they're going to start this season off with a bang. Uh, the Ds have an elite forward line. Uh, had the second best offense in the competition last year, and I think it was the first best defense. So just a really good all-round team. I'm going to have a look at their offense and their leading goal kicker, Kate Hoare. Uh, Kate Hoare was yeah really good last year. He averaged uh, one and a half goals per game. Uh, she's a medium-sized forward with a strong contested mark, but then you got Taylor Harris who comes out of the goal square and brings the ball to ground a lot, and Hoare is also able to yeah crumb her um, and get a good few goals on the ground. So she's really versatile and can play that centre-half forward, even that forward pocket role, and that's why she's kicked so many goals over the last couple of years. Uh, she had two-plus goals in uh, six of the ten regular season games last season, so she's one of those yeah goal kicks you can definitely rely on to have a bet. Uh, she is the favorite uh, for Melbourne, I think, to kick the two-plus goals here, but still $2, so I think that's really good odds. I think uh, Collingwood are going to be pretty solid in this game. Usually the season opener is really close, just two, two teams filling each other out, but they're going to look for uh, Hoare and Harris. Harris is another one. I think it's around $2.50, $3. You could probably lock them both in for two-plus, but I think Kate Hoare is an absolute lock at uh, yeah $2, I think, uh, with Labrox. It's really good. How's Collingwood's defense, do you think? Uh, they do actually have a pretty strong defense. That's probably where they are best, but they have a lot of girls that like to run off. So similar to your Saints and a few others, I think they'll get caught on the counter-attack a bit. Uh, Kate Hall is really quick uh, as well. So I think she might get a few goals out the back, but she can also take a mark. So double threat. Nice one. Not bad. Yeah. Good stuff, Stats Guy. All right, let's do some match and or game picks. What's your best match or game pick? Well, me, I'll tell you. Uh, the second round of FIBA World Cup obviously gets underway tonight. Very late for the Aussies, but there are a lot of other games. So if you're paying attention, NBA Australia, a.k.a. me, will be doing a live stream for the Boomers game at 10.10. 10. 
aka 10 tins by 10 10. Uh, that's the challenge. It's going to be messy. Um, as I said, I think on yesterday's NBA show or yesterday's uh, Cobet Daily stats guy, uh, did you ever see a guy pass out on camera? Yes. <laughs> yes. Anyway, but- <laughs> just one time. Uh, the other games, however, let's run through all of them. Serbia minus seven and a half against Italy. Serbia should absolutely smash Italy. Um, the Italians have not looked wildly impressive so far. Serbia have. Uh, Germany versus Georgia. I mentioned this one earlier. Georgia is 16 and a half point underdogs. They've been very handy throughout this entire tournament. I'm taking Georgia just to keep that within spinning distance right of Germany because the Germans, as much top end talent as they have against, you know, we saw them beat the Aussies, um, not a giant amount of depth. And Georgia might be able to sort of like, you know, just keep that within 15 and away we go. USA, Montenegro, same vibes. USA haven't been exactly, well, they have demolished a couple of teams, but. They're spreading it out. I feel like it makes them just that little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more vulnerable to a team like Montenegro who can just go, we've got a couple of big dudes. That's exactly yeah. what the USA Off do the not line. have. Let's go. Plus 26 and a half for Montenegro, sure. I mean, <laughs> uh, the USA will win that one pretty handily, but like if it's like 109 to 89, like whatever. Uh, Spain, hello, Spain, minus 10 and a half versus Latvia. Um, Latvia had been. Latvia have been the surprise packets up until like the last game. Um, they've got a couple of really handy dudes and they play really well together as a team. Unfortunately, Spain do that. They're way better. So I'm yeah, taking they're... Spain. Yeah. Dominican Republic, you've got Carl Anthony Towns versus Puerto Rico. This is the Battle of the Caribbean stats guy. I like this one. Minus eight and a half for the Dominican Republic and Carl Anthony Towns. They're way too good for Puerto Rico. Yeah. And uh, the backup talent actually around Cat has been really handy too. Puerto Rico, not quite strong enough. Good shooting, yeah. Slovenia versus Australia. We're going the Slovenians plus six and a half. This is going to be <laughs> at 12.30 tonight, just punching a wall at how <laughs> close that was, but how Probably, we're yeah. going to sneak through, hopefully. Um, yeah. That line has actually moved out as well, which is good. So it was plus five and a half. It's now plus six and a half. So I'll take that again uh, because I'm getting an extra point. Uh, but I still think Australia win this game. I don't think it's by that 13-ish point margin, though. We are a deeper team than we were in Tokyo, uh, but Slovenia is just that little bit better. And I think I made the point on NBA Australia yesterday. Luke is a better player now, too. Like, than two years ago, it was just so heliocentric. He'd also come off, like, maybe, I think, he, only his, like, maybe rookie year in the NBA um, and just looked physically just beat by the end of the Olympics, right? And whereas this one, we're catching them game four. He's Lying, he's fresh, yeah, and he's <laughs> awesome. So I think that's why the forty plus. I brought that up in the player props. That's why I think Slovenia keep this close. Lithuania minus six and a half against Greece uh, because they're better than Greece, and Greece are not very good. Canada against Brazil. I didn't like this one nineteen and a half, but Canada have been blowing teams out. They are my pick for the World Cup. Nineteen and a half here. Let's go, Canada. Rate my multi. Fire it up, Gerald. Rate my multi. Song of the summer, Serbia minus seven and a half over Italy. Dominican Republic minus nine and a half over Puerto Rico. Oh, actually, is that eight and a half? What's changed there? Let's check that one before we uh, make any wild pronouncements. Either way, uh, Slovenia plus six and a half, as I mentioned, against the Aussies, and Lithuania minus six and a half over Greece. That'll get you eleven dollars seventy-seven as a four-leg multi. I'm going against the Aussies in that one, but I mean. I'm still picking Australia to win. I just don't think it'd be by much. What do yep. we think, gentlemen? Rate my multi. I'll give it a eight and a half or a nine. I reckon that's pretty good. Yes. Uh, the yes. one those are the, probably the four that I think yeah going to get up. The other there's a few other ones if you included in your multi, I'd have been there. Eh, but yeah, I like it. Yep, nice one, Alex. The amount of tins that Nikola Jokic just sank since he won the NBA. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is, that uh, t- <laughs> two two thousand <laughs> at least five million. Yeah, he celebrates more when his horse wins than for an NBA Hey, and you know what? So he should. Very funny. Best day of my life when my horse won. (laughs) True, true. I feel like Steph's going to have something to say about that. Anywho. (laughs) Oh, no, I told her that. Not happy. (laughs) It wasn't when you met me. Well, no. (laughs) We are coming up on 12 months, so this could be the end. Oh, Oh, yeah, because it was when COVID started. (laughs) No, no, we had the first date before the official titles, and that's later in the month. Yeah, nice. the, the weird one was that Alex took me out ring shopping the other day as well. I'm like, where's the bus? Yeah, I got like an extra $200. I'm like, oh, I can buy a ring. Alex, you know, you know, you meant to spend like two grand, right? Uh, 
<laughs> Bugger. <laughs> Stats guy is like, what is it? 25% of your pay pack? And he's like, what's zero of zero? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 25 times zero is zero. Beautiful. I don't, yeah, I don't want to do maths. <laughs> All right. Stats this guy. Oh, no, Alex, with your yeah. game picks, have you got some NRL? Yeah, you got some NRL and some APL here. So looking at t- uh, tonight's game, Manly minus 12 and a half to absolutely smash West Tigers to finish off the season. They're still going to get it done, Manly, and West Tigers are just like, man, we could go all the way to Manly for our last game. No one wants to do that in peak hour traffic on a Friday. It's gross. <laughs> That's uh, the Roosters to win head-to-head against the Bunnies. They are playing so much better than South Sydney. No Latrell Mitchell. Uh, so I can't believe that South Sydney are favourites. They have been rubbish for the last month, whereas the Roosters are just winning and winning and winning. <clears throat> Loser of this definitely doesn't play finals. Winner still has a chance. Uh, going to Sunday, Gold Coast Titans versus the Canterbury Bulldogs. What do these both teams suck at, gentlemen? Uh, not getting injured. Not being good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, bit defending. Things. Defending, okay. Yeah, yeah, they suck at defending. So we're going to take the Titans and over 55 and a half points. Ooh. There is, yeah, it's like one of the biggest over-unders I've ever seen in NRL. It could <laughs> literally be like 40 to 24 and I'm not going to be shopping that. Oh, yeah, that was kind of bad. Uh, yeah. Anyway, moving across to the EPL, Tottenham and over two and a half goals this weekend. They travel to take on Burnley at Turf Moor. Burnley have leaked six goals in their opening two games this season. Tottenham have scored two games in each of their th- two goals in each of their three games this year. That's two bucks sixty-five. Moving to the main, what I think is the main game of the weekend. It's one of probably three, but Arsenal taking on Manchester United. Arsenal and over three and a half goals at two dollars ninety. I've said it to Stats Guy during the week. I think Arsenal put an absolute hurting on United on on Sunday night. United are going absolutely no good whatsoever. Uh, and, to Ars- uh, and Arsenal are going sort of okay. But I feel this is that explosion game where it's like, oh, yeah, Mikel yelled at us aggressively last week when we drew to <laughs> Fulham. So correct score, Arsenal 3-1, 12 bucks, or 4-1 at $23. I think this is a legitimate Ooh. ass whipping. Nice. And they yeah. you still give up a goal, though, because it's Arsenal. Yeah, exactly. Like There's some stupid cluster mark of a yeah. you know, thing. Arsenal and always like, randomly. And Rashford or Fernandez scores. I'm just like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, stats guy. What about you? I got a bit of a rate my multi as well. If Jared wants to hit the bit again, rate but... my multi. All right, so AFLW Week One. I'm going to start with Carlton taking on Gold Coast. Uh, I'm going to go Gold Coast minus two and a half. I think that's a really short line. Uh, I think I don't know if it's a lot of Carlton supporters getting on them uh, for the Premiership and things like that. They're way too low. They only won uh, two games last year and have lost a lot of key players across the last few seasons. So Gold Coast minus two and a half. They're going to be a team pushing for finals. So really like that line. Then I'm just going to take Geelong head to head against the Dogs. Uh, I think Geelong can push for the top four this year. They were fifth last year. I have Georgie Prasparkas, who's one of the best players in the comp, and we're really strong at home, so I'm going to go Geelong head-to-head there. Uh, then looking at uh, the Western Derby, Frio taking on West Coast. Uh, I think uh, I tipped in my article if you want to check that out on curbbed.com.au. Uh, West Coast, they're going to go do the double in the men's and the women's for the wooden spoon, which is Ooh. a bit sad, uh, I think, but That's we'll see how funny. that goes. Uh, so Frio as well, uh, they finished 12th last year, but half their team was injured. They've got a lot They've of They've got uh, that um, really in. gun midfielder, don't they, Frio? Uh, Bowers or whatever Yeah, her name Kiara is. Bowers. Yeah, Kiara Bower- Bowers. Hours, and I was going to mention someone else, but I forgot her name. Uh, they've got an elite midfield, uh, going to be up there in the top eight this year compared to last year where they just had so many injuries. So the line is 21 and a half, which is a big line in AFLW, but West Coast are going to be one of the worst teams. So I'm going to take Frio at the line there. Uh, and then lastly, I'm going to take uh, Br- Richmond plus 19 and a half against Brisbane. Now, Brisbane finished the top of the ladder last year. Obviously, we're in the grand final, but Alex mentioned, I think it was earlier in the week, they lost their leading goal kicker, who was also the leading goal kicker of the comp. Uh, I'm really surprised Brisbane are still uh, second favourites for the flag. They lost a couple yeah. of players, the literally leading goal kicker in the comp, which is vital in AFLW to kick a big score. So Richmond, they also only lost to Brisbane last year by 17. I think it's going to be really close and they could even win this one. They've got a great young talent. they got Monique Conti, who's one of the stars of the competition as well. So Richmond plus 19 and a half there. I'll just go through it again. Gold Coast minus two and a half. Uh, Geelong head to head. Frio minus 21 and a half and Richmond plus 19 and a half is $8.91 with Labrooks. Jeez. I'm concerned about the minus 21 and a half because we rarely see huge margins in yeah. AFLW. It's literally what I was about to say too. It's yeah. like, Against the bottom only- few teams, you have a couple yeah, of... Like, just- had a couple of games last year where they won by like... Yeah, yeah but it's one of those things like surely, you know, I know it's... Uh, what are we in like the fifth or sixth season? I know it's, you know, this rivalry is new, but it's still a built-in derby. So it's like yeah. they're going to be pumped up and it's going to be really scrappy and contested. So I just... 
Yeah, fair. If that, if we just didn't have that, like if it was more probably 15 or 16, I'd be with it. But 21, it just seems four goals yeah. is a now, lot. There's a lot of big lines like North, I'm steering yeah. clear. Even, even Melbourne tonight, I'm steering clear. That's like the only big line I, yeah. I would take this weekend. Also, yeah. shout out to the uh, Brisbane coach going, oh, it's good to be underdogs this year. And sounds like, bet you're second you're still, favorite for the Yeah, still flag. second favorites. And you lost half your team. Like, <laughs> Nobody <laughs> believes in us. Yeah. Like, everybody <laughs> believes in you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. All right, that's a good one. I like this. Um, I do worry about the 21 and a half from Frio. Fair enough. I'd probably give that about a seven because I can see them smashing them anyway, but it's just still a big line, Freya Field W. If yeah. it was like that's yeah, as Alex said, what, what, 15. So if it's like under three goals, I'd probably go, but over that three-goal mark, I'm a little bit yeah. worried. All right, let's do some best bets. It's best bets. It's best bets. It's time for all the best bets. Got everything in that song. It's got the beep, 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 beep behind it. <laughs> Hey, the songbird of my generation. Uh, <laughs> before we get into some FIBA for tonight as well, how about some college football, gentlemen? It is the start of the yeah. college football season over in the right. US of A. California, Cal minus six and a half at North Texas. I'll take Cal. Toledo plus nine and a half at Illinois. And we'll go Penn State minus 20 and a half against the West Virginia Mountaineers. Um, there's also a weird, weird, screwy one. Northwestern, who lost their coach uh, in the preseason because of the hazing scandal, uh, playing at Rutgers. Northwestern plus six and a half. I actually don't mind that too. You can actually multi those up and it's 1240, but uh, a bit wobbly. Uh, a couple of FIBA ones though that I feel much more confident in. Serbia minus seven and a half and over 170 and a half points. That is $3.50, you little ripper. That is probably my favorite play for tonight. Uh, Serbia are averaging the third most points per game in the entire comp, 104.7 per game. That is chaos. So Serbia, what? Italy is still putting up 84.3 themselves. So... Not bad. Good size. This yeah, could be yeah. 100 to 72 and you're covering. So, um, and Australia versus Slovenia, go the over there too. Both teams are not playing great defense, let's be honest. Uh, the Boomers gave up 89 to Japan. They yeah, gave up 86 bad. to Germany. Uh, <laughs> neither of those teams have anyone anywhere near as good as Luka Doncic. It's like, oh, but they've got Dennis Schroeder. Yeah, and he sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We made him look a lot Bro, better. <laughs> he made him look like the greatest point guard in the history of the international that was what I think the commentator said, and this is one of the best players in the world. I'm like, he's not. We're just making him look like it. <laughs> he's like a mid-rung point guard who can't get a starting gig. What are we doing? Anyway, uh, <laughs> NFL ones as well. We actually, actually, if you want to go through some AFL picks for next week's final stats guy, and I did a all AFL code bet daily yesterday. So yes. I think my best bet out of that was still Lions and the over for their game against Port. Top two, uh, top three offenses in the AFL, so that should be absolutely fine. But yeah. NFL, a couple more season wins that'll go up today, hopefully on the site. Uh, Baltimore, that is still at nine and a half. I'm still going over. People are talking themselves out of this. Uh, other folks are talking themselves into it. It's still a dollar sixty over nine and a half. They should win eleven games easy. And Cincinnati in that exact same division, over eleven and a half, is now bumped up to two dollars thirty. As people have gone, hang on a second, since you are playing a really tough division. Maybe that depresses their win total a little bit. I think it might, but I think they still get to 12 because they're awesome. So we're going 11 and a half, $2.30. I think you could also go Cincinnati exactly 12 wins and you'd be laughing. So uh, we'll have a lot more NFL before the start of the NFL season next Friday. Uh, and if you just want to do a quick check in, Luca, top point scorer, that went from $2.60, $2. Now it's $1.85. I think wow. I might have that one in the bag, averaging 30 points a game. All right, uh, stats guy. Yeah, so AFLW Premiership I'm going to have a look at. Uh, I talked about this in my article as well on the Cobet website. I think I talked about North Melbourne the other day, but I'm going to go a bit deeper into it now that I've researched it a little bit more. Uh, a lot of people are yeah, getting on board. I reckon they'll over the next few weeks, they'll drop in odds. They're $8 currently at the moment, which I think is really good value. As I mentioned before, Brisbane are the second favorites, but I think Brisbane are going to be one of the sliders, so that pushes north above them, I'm pretty sure. Uh, even Adelaide are around that mark, but I'd still see the depth of North Melbourne uh, a little bit better than there. They're... Uh, that team, oh, I forgot what I was going to say there. Uh, well, Melbourne, that's what I was going to say. Melbourne well, and Brisbane. That guy's just getting excited because North business. Melbourne look like they're going to be competitive for once. I know. I can't believe I'm, I'm talking like about North is, Melbourne and Premiership. That's probably you, why I'm. You basically bit, uh, stroked out because you're like, <laughs> North Melbourne and success. <laughs> 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 but yeah, we've got an improved offense. Uh, and not compute. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel weird talking about it, but that's why yeah, the girls are really good in the AFLW. Uh, we've got an improved offense. We recruited uh, Kate Shearlaw in the offseason, who was the Saints' leading goal kicker. And I think that's going to be an awesome forward line with Emma King and Talia Randall down there. They All three of them can take contested marks. 
If you can score big in AFLW, it helps you go all the way. Uh, Brisbane and Melbourne were the two best teams all of last year, and they were the two top offences. I think North are going to be up there as number one or two offence this season, so it's going to go a long way for them winning the flag. Uh, you've got Jasmine Garner, who's the 2022 All-Australian uh, captain. She's absolutely awesome in the midfield, can even go down and kick some snags. And they've got Emma Kearney as their skipper, who's the only player to yeah, have seven straight All-Australians. So I think this team huh. is just looking really good. You've got uh, some Irish players as well last year that were in their first season. Now they're in their second season, a bit more experienced. You had a lot of young young girls last year as well. So I think this is just the right time. North have made the finals the last four years, but just haven't got to that next stage. This is their time. And $8, I'm going to take it on because I think it's going to drop uh, in the next few weeks when people go, oh, they're actually pretty good. That's a good call, Sats guy. Mm-hmm. Eight bucks is pretty good for a yeah. competition that sort of does have like a couple of standouts, but it does feel very easy. Melbourne are the benchmark that. still. Like exactly. I think the, they they should be yeah, the well deserved favourites. But if North have a good first month, I think they'll be right up there. Great. Good value. Mm-hmm. All right, Alex, take us through. I believe it's time for it. Everyone's favorite moment on a Friday. Donation. This one might actually win. Donation. Alex Babs, some legs. <laughs> <laughs> right, I uh, mentioned it before. Manly minus 12.5 tonight against the West Tigers. Into the Roosters to beat South Sydney. Penrith Panthers to beat the North Queensland Cowboys. Somehow the Warriors are outsiders tomorrow against the Dolphins. I know they're uh, resting a few the players, hell, yeah. but dead set, the Dolphins are like, guys, guys, we need this season and we are so tired. Yeah, so I can't believe that players. whatsoever. <laughs> That's probably the riskiest one for me. Uh, then into the EPL, West Ham head-to-head against Luton tomorrow morning. And then Brentford play Bournemouth. I think Brentford get the job done there. Of course, we've got to finish off with some horses. Uh, go check out Hold All Tickets as well, where Lammy and I broke down the races from Caulfield and Ramwick tomorrow. But Ramwick, my best bet tomorrow is race three, number 12, Tazaral. We're just going to put this horse in for the place. He's won two in a row at the track and distance, and he stays there once again. Play the same song, please. Also, Caulfield, race two, number 14, Rheinberg, just to place. Uh, has come back in way better form this time in and looks to be a stakes-class horse on the way through. Still running in benchmark grade. And side note, there's no footy in Melbourne this weekend. Get to Caulfield. That's going to be awesome. We've got the Memsey Stakes. It is literally the, sp- <laughs> the spring opener from Caulfield. So go check it out. Uh, I'm going to probably head down for the last couple of races because I don't have anything else to do. So it's going to be a good afternoon down there at Caulfield. Anyway, that donation comes to $108.91. If you want the horses to win, it's $502.81. Yeah, get on the 500 <laughs> Why wouldn't you be the 502 <laughs> Uh, Two shekels on each. I also, uh, I also will take uh, some uh, umbrage with your Noah AFL in Melbourne this week. No AFL ends. Yes, in- sorry, yes. AFLW. Yeah, yeah. 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 Stats yeah. got to be shirt off at the uh, on the hill at Arden's. Yeah, with a flare. Nah, yeah. Next week we're not uh, we're in uh, Tassie this week, so I'll be watching from home. <laughs> that doesn't matter. I think you'll still be shirtless on the hill at, at Arden Street. <laughs> Hopefully the game. He's just will- preparing. Yeah. <laughs> Getting everyone G'd up. I love that. That's a good one. Donation wise, one hundred eight ninety one with the horses to play. It's five hundred and two and eighty one them to win yeah uh i i'm interested so the manly west tigers game tonight yep i think i ended up going against the 12 and a half for west just because they've played manly actually not too badly yeah and they had their dead coach bounce win two weeks ago were pretty not great last week obviously yeah. but i think it's the one that they want to just finish off on like not a horrible note maybe with Benji in charge now. Yeah, but like, it could also be, uh, we just got to go to Manly. It's the 6 o'clock game on Friday. We just don't care. Don't want to get injured. Yeah, it's the one thing that I'm worried about, that 12 and a half, because Manly also, I mean, decimated. Yeah. So I think I tipped Wes on the site, but you and Phil have both gone Manly. So. Hmm. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a dude. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there we go. Good stuff. That's it. Cobed Daily done for today and done for the week. Now, NBA Australia will be doing a live stream tonight for the Slovenia-Australia game at 10, 10 p.m. Pronto. Yeah, uh, 10 p.m. <laughs> I'll uh, kick that off. 10 tins deep at 10 p.m. for 10, 10. Uh, and then again for the Australia-Georgia game on Sunday at 5.30 in the afternoon. Uh, Father's Day. Yeah. Can't tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want. Uh, <laughs> that involves sinking beer. Oh, actually, I've got like a uh, lunch booking at 4. Uh, That's but not anyway, lunch. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. That's what happens when you got kids. You're like, lunch is now four. <laughs> what? That's an early dinner for seniors. <laughs> Blue plate special, that one. Uh, but, yeah, I think uh, so we'll do Australia-Georgia, though, at 5.30. We'll be back in time for that. That's a good, other good thing about having kids. 
a quick. All right. Uh, <laughs> so check out NBA Australia for all that. And of course, all the other shows we do here on Code Bet. Uh, we have the Code Bet EPL show. We have the Code Bet AFL show, which was also their daily show yesterday. But we also have the Code Bet NRL show with Alex and Phil. And of course, hold, up, hold all tickets with punters.com.au with Alex yeah. and our man, James Lamb. Good times, great memories. NFL Australia, that started up again this week as well with myself and Gaz, and NBA Australia is covering a bunch of the FIBA gear. So like, review, and star them all, or we'll send stats guy around to your house, and he'll just be weird. All right, uh, check us follow across all the socials as well, Face the IG, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, all the good stuff. And send any questions in via the socials. Our social guy, Leo, will be all over it, and uh, we'll rate your multi, rate your bets, whatever you need to. And I think that's it. Good stuff. Thanks, stats guy. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Cheers, Jim. And thanks always to Gerald for doing a great job behind the camera producing this gear. And, of course, thanks to me for helming all this and doing 87 other shows at the same time. Yeah. Alex is like, I do shows as well. I'm like, until you do nine shows a week, you need to settle down there. Oh. Uh, he's now like, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah, I, do. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, I do. Shut up. <laughs> <up. laughs> no, you only did. I did eight this week. No, you didn't had, really yesterday. No, AFL, yeah, yeah, but also NRL, EPL, AFL. Oh, not AFL, sorry, hold all tickets. Uh, so you did, uh, I think, seven. So I've got to beat. Uh, <laughs> I also did that function last night. Cry me a river. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see Timberlake over there. All right, what do we say, stats guy? Go north and our game will <laughs> Uh, I'll throw a flag on that play, but that's all right. Uh, may all you picks come in. Happy punting. Have a great weekend. We'll catch you on Monday. Well, actually, these guys will catch you on Monday. I've got the day off. Oh, uh, what? Go bed daily. <laughs> Out. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.